Oh, um, one of the reviews for Baldur's Gate 3 says it's D&D for the imagination impaired. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I can see that. Ouch! <laughs> I mean, they were recommending it, but still. Funny. Yeah, kind of like a slap in the face, right? Oh. That's going to yeah. the video. Hey guys, Justin here from Game On. You're here for Baldur's Gate 3, so let's just jump straight into this. So, I'm not a video game journalist, and I'm not feigning to be one. However, Matt and I are RPG journalists, and have quite the stake in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Not only have we been playing since its playtest, but we continue to playtest as we appear in some of the books. I tell you this because I'm explaining this game at an angle of a D&D &D player and Dungeon Master, and not that of a huge video game player. My take on this game may be slightly different than what you'll see from other video game reviewers. I could talk about the graphical glitches, I could complain about how I crashed three times in the same place, I could compare this to other video game RPG systems, yet instead, I'm going to tell you why I think this is the best D&D &D game ever made to this date. To prove my point, we're going to look at character creation. Being an early access game, Baldur's Gate 3 does not have all the classes and races right now, same with backgrounds. Baldur's Gate 3 has done something that Neverwinter and even the first Baldur's Gate to an extent couldn't do, and that is do a near one-to-one -one translation from the rulebooks into a video game. My single player character is a ranger with a folk hero background. I didn't read any of the subtext to see what my proficiencies and abilities would be, as I knew what they'd be from the book, and at the end of character creation, everything was exactly as I would have imagined as if I was building him from the pen and paper game. The attributes of strength, constitution, charisma, etc. are all based on the point by system. However, I will say that I ran into some glitches of not being able to, sometimes, increase my attributes past 15. I can do it for some characters, but some of them, they won't go past 15, and I can't quite figure that out why. It's really cool that I can actually use my Dungeons & Dragons familiarity to build a character just like I would when I'm playing around the table with friends. But don't fret if you're not as familiar, because the character creation process, just like the pen and paper version, is much simpler and intuitive compared to the other game systems. You'll have the choice of race, background, and class to create your perfect level 1 character. What you're seeing in the background is early game to avoid a lot of spoilers, but I want you to understand that this game is a game built up from D. D. This is not just a reskin of Dragon Age, Elder Scrolls Online, or even Divinity Original Sin. Everything from passive checks such as passive perception or passive insight, all the way to literally rolling an RNG d20 to see if you pass or fail. And it's just like my real life characters. I tend to fail when I need them to pass the most. So they got that absolutely correct for my characters. Combat is turn-based, just like the pen and paper version, and akin to that, certain spells and cantrips are more helpful than others. Blade Ward and True Strike are things I never use, just as I don't use them in the pen and paper, and hit calculations are based on die rolls, but you can still roll a 1 and critically miss, or roll a 20 and critically hit. The advantage and disadvantage system is wrapped up and presented nicely, adding to your percentage to hit grand total. Hitting a prone enemy with your ranged attack will give you a roughly 23-ish percentage downgrade to hit, because you'd be rolling with disadvantage, but attacking with a melee weapon would decrease your probability of about the same amount, which is roughly adding a plus 5 to hit, as you'd be attacking with advantage. Yet, even if all that means nothing to you, you will easily understand what your probabilities are to hit something with a simple percentage calculation. It's just very well thought out in the sense that you can play without any pre-existing knowledge of how 5e dice rolls work, but if you do, then you get the affirmation from the game's calculations as if you never needed them. Speaking of combat, did I mention how freaking cool it is? One of the things players of the pen and paper game have issues with is describing how they approach combat. In Baldur's Gate 3, you get an awesome visual reference on how you can describe your actions. It's not just, I swing my sword, 8 damage. It turns into an awesome swinging animation. Instead of, I cast Firebolt, the cantrip becomes an event. Take this. Even healing word and cure wounds has an awesome animation of the characters absorbing healing energy and giving it to someone else. These animations have given me as a DM so many ideas on how to describe actions, and the next time I play pen and paper, I'm going to be using these. 
Saves, attack rolls, and AoE actions are animated nicely, and the main action, bonus action, move, something that players of the pen and paper take a little time to grasp, is easily shown by symbols on what you can and can't do, as well as how much movement you have left. The only thing Americans may get a little taken aback by is the meters instead of feet, as we're used to using 5 foot squares and not meters. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal, as you'll always have a visual reference on what you can aim at and where you can move to. Speaking of moving, this is an early access game, so I'll give it a pass. My characters, no matter how I path them, tend to walk through AoE spells like it's their job. Remember those nightmare modules from 3rd edition where you had to take damage every chance you could just to see how long you'd survive? Sometimes it feels like that when I'm playing and I have to avoid my own AoE spells if I want to rush ahead because of my frontline fighters will just walk right through it no matter what. This isn't every battle, mind you, but I guess what I'm saying is make sure you have healing potions just in case. Leveling up my characters, though, with limited options is still fun, and I get to build the perfect party for my playstyle. Again, I do have the knowledge of the spells and classes from the pen and paper game, so it's easy for those who play that, but one of the few criticisms is in the leveling up. If you don't know a lot about spells and subclasses, you may have to look at a guide to make heads or tails of what spells known versus spells prepared might mean, as well as some of the subclasses which is best to play for your party. The roleplay aspects are fun, but it's not as freeing as the pen and paper. Now don't expect it to be, because the game designers can't expect you to say your crazy one-liners and have a response off the spot like that. The dialogue options are clear and concise, and they do a pretty decent job covering the options any sane player would take. The voice acting is good, but holy cow, the music is awesome. So here's my verdict. If you're looking to get into D&D, but haven't had the chance to, or just want to dip your toes in the lore and mechanics, Baldur's Gate 3 is a great game to start with. If you're someone like me, with thousands of hours with the game and know most if not all of the rules and details, this is a great game to pick and play, as you'll feel affirmed by all of your knowledge, and this game will just help you get a better visualization of what combat can look like. And lastly, if you're someone who doesn't care about D&D at all, but just like Solarian Studios or other video game RPGs, Baldur's Gate 3 will be a fun game to play as well. The quarantine has forced me to play less pen and paper RPGs, and I haven't been able to scratch that itch with video games. But luckily, even though it's only one chapter and janky as hell, Baldur's Gate 3 not only scratches the itch, but makes me smile ear to ear as I make my game-changing choices through leveling up and taking certain quests. Now excuse me, I gotta go write another D&D campaign as I feel very inspired. <laughs>